I'm, uh, I'm Curtis Dozier. I teach in Greek and Roman studies. So what's the relationship between satire in like Roman times and satire now? Well, there, there, there are two ways I like to think about that. One, one is that the techniques that the Roman satirists developed, the Romans thought they had invented satire, so they have some, you know, some, whether that's true or not, they have some kind of claim to our attention as a place because they took a lot of pride in their satirical products. The techniques they developed um, are still in use by satirists today. So that's one way you can, uh, one point of interest in studying Roman satire in connection with, um, for example, John Stewart or Stephen Colbert. And the other way is that thinking about the way satire functioned in Roman culture as a genre can, can raise questions about the way satire functions in contemporary culture. So in a way there's a kind of point of contact, the same techniques are used, but here we are in a totally different world. So it can, studying the ancient functions can highlight the differences in the way that we, that we use it. Right. So Stephen Colbert is kind of notable because he like he sort of puts on a front for people um, that people kind of laugh at, like while he's making points that like some people would consider legitimate in another uh, circumstance. Mm -hmm. Was there anything similar to that in Roman times? Uh, yeah, actually, that's one of the primary techniques of the Roman uh, the Roman satirists, and and their word for it was the persona, uh, which is a Latin word that means mask, and so. Horace and Juvenal, in their poetry, put on the mask of another character from which they speak their invective. And Stephen Colbert is a great example of that because he puts on the mask of a conservative host. Right. And your question uh, kind of highlights the usefulness of that mask for Horace and Juvenal and for Colbert in that uh, it actually has like, several functions. One, a kind of obvious one, is it protects the satir satirist against retaliation because he can always say, don't attack me. That was just a that was just an act. That was just my persona. So that's what that's one thing it accomplishes. But the other thing it accomplishes, which you which you note, is that it allows for a kind of multiplicity of critiques. So Colbert's show is a good example of that. He's simultaneously humiliating the people who are on his show, while making fun of the kind of uh, the kind of commentator that he is embodying. And that, uh, and so that kind of destabilizing of our sense of who is being satirized is a feature of, I, I would say, is the central feature of satire. And in its most sophisticated form, satire even then turns the invective against the audience right. also. And you can actually see this, I think, in, uh, in John Stewart's show. So his show is, a, in a way, an extended parody of traditional news outlets. Right. And so, and he's wearing the mask of the host. Yeah. And so, he's not only making fun of the people who are in the news, which he does very well, but he's also making fun of the people who report the news, because he's sort of occupying their seat in a kind of warped or parodic way. But at the same time, if you think of it, the show also is a critique of the people who watch it. A lot of people are are content to think of The Daily Show as a kind of liberal biased news show for liberals. And it is that. It does make fun of conservatives. But because of the way that Jon Stewart baits the audience, he baits them to devour his news as voraciously as they do, to, to salivate over any hint of conservative hypocrisy without any recognition of their own hypocrisy. Right. Even watching the show is to kind of subject yourself to a critique of the thing that many people think the show supports, that is a liberal viewpoint. If you think of it, liberals watch The Daily Show as avidly as right-wing audiences watch Fox News or, or whatever it is. So, it, so again, Stewart's sort of baiting you to put yourself in the position of the person you criticize. Right.